Hello and welcome to the control room. I'm here with uh, Rich and Cam um, to talk about our vision offer from Rutico. Uh, the first thing I'd really like to, to get onto, and we can get into this straight away, is just to discuss the offer that Rutico has within the vision, the vision space. Would you like to sort of just describe what, what we can offer customers? Do you want to go ahead, Rich? Yes, so we, we can offer uh, customers the full um, range of vision products from Cognex, who are the world's leading machine vision company. Um, so we can supply um, the full range of standalone products from Cognex. That's in the machine vision and barcode reading space. Um, so that's products that you know contain artificial intelligence, um, very advanced algorithms, all that sort of thing. Um, and we can also help with proof of concepts through CAM. Um, and then we can offer full technical support and full turnkey projects if, if that's what the customer requires. Okay. And when you say sort of the proof of concept, um, what does that sort of mean for yourself? What are, what are you doing there? Proof of concept allows a customer to ensure that the application is achievable uh, before actually purchasing. Um, so my role uh, within Rotico is actually to prove, uh, prove out uh, the concept of applications. So Richard and Kev will, will uh, approach customers or customers will come to us provide us samples and my main job day to day is proving out an application, obtaining samples, uh, carrying out the, the tests with the necessary equipment the, and that includes the, the lighting uh, which is key to, to uh, all applications and the appropriate cameras. We can then make a, a decision on which is the most appropriate camera to, to solve the application and then we can provide a, uh, an official quotation to the customer. Okay, so customers can come to us as, as Rutico mm -hmm. and they can have a, a problem within their, uh, within their plant, within their factory and come to us for a solution Absolutely. In, in the vision world. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. And you mentioned um, sort of artificial intelligence uh, within the, the Cognex range. Uh, how is that, because it's a hot topic really at the moment mm -hmm. uh, in many areas of the sort of tech world, um, but how is that sort of helping Cognex help customers? <laughs> well, I think the main thing to, to recognize is that AI and the, the, the term AI, artificial intelligence, has become, a, a, I'd say, a throwable term where uh, now it's used by everybody. Hmm. But when we talk about AI in the, the space of machine vision, that's what we're actually talking about. So machine vision is about rule-based applications hmm. where deep learning AI is a subset of of machine vision. Um, so what we look at is when we look at applications traditionally and typically in the past, it's been about rule based. So for example, if a customer ha is looking for a red circle, for example, um, they'll create a rule. An engineer will sit down, look at all the rules that are possible and use appropriate algorithms to solve the application. Um, however, in certain cases, when, when it, we look at applications, they're not all defined by rules. They're defined by possibly images, actual examples. That's where deep learning and uh, edge learning are more powerful uh, than rule-based. So a customer would give us lots of samples or lots of images and we can upload them and we allow, in, this in, in respect of uh, the solution, we allow the algorithm to, to come up with a solution rather than uh, a, an engineer. Okay, okay. So it's, it's the, the work there is being placed onto the, the camera itself and sort of the, the technology within, within that and the software, I suppose. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So it, it's mainly the algorithms that will create um, the, the ability to, for, for us to define if it's a solution is possible in the first instance. So I think uh, some of the key things there is the deep learning uh, and the, the edge learning. Um, I mean, did you, did you sort of explain that in, in depth there or no, is there more that customers need to know? Um, well, deep learning um, is uh, an algorithm or set of algorithms that rely really on lots and lots of images or lots of examples um, is, the right, uh, is the key uh, term for it. It also requires a, a GPU uh, PC or a laptop to run them, them algorithms. They tend to be more aggressive algorithms um, and really designed for more complex applications. Um, so lots of companies have looked at that, especially Cognex, and realized that in the, in the, the space of deep learning and non-rule-based applications, 
there's a possibility of edge learning. Edge learning will allow a customer to sit down, the simple tools, and with a few click of the buttons with, with some of the, the kit from uh, Cognex, will allow them to do, I'd say, mediocre uh, but difficult rule, uh, non-rule based applications. So they don't need to be a specialist. And that's okay. the key thing here. Edge learning is about a non-specialist. Um, and we can train somebody up within a couple of hours on how to use edge learning cameras. Okay. So, so you could have someone um, purchase the, the uh, equipment mm -hmm. uh, and then be able to use it in a functional manner within you know, yeah. Yeah. A, a day, a working yeah. day, yeah. effectively. Absolutely. I mean, for, for example, when I talk to customers, I'll, I'll often give a, a demonstration of the edge learning on the Insight 2800 camera, mm -hmm. and it will take no more than five or ten minutes yeah. to run through a sort of job that we would be fairly happy if that was a production environment that after that length of time that that job would actually be you know perfectly capable of solving the application so yeah it's a much more I think simplistic is not probably the correct word to use but it's, it's a much easier way of deploying that sort of technology rather than having to spend hours and hours processing mm -hmm. images through a laptop but we, we're finding lots of applications where it is very very useful it solves the application easily as well as, as what a standard rules-based system would, but it's just so much easier to deploy and saves a customer mm. lots and lots of time. And then in the future, if they do need to make changes to the job, it's so much simpler than having to adjust all the different rules that you've set up beforehand right. on, a, on a sort of traditional camera. Right. And the, the one thing I'd say is to recognize the difference between what we class as a rule-based and mm. um, where we class as deep learning or edge learning. Sure. Um, when we talk about rule-based, if we have an engineering part, for an example, that's a rule that would state that that part is engineered completely perfect each, every single time. Right. But what happens when we've got circumstances like the food industry, if we're looking for quality of dough, for example, uh, quality of uh, meat, quality of any product that is classed as organic, it varies, but we as humans consume a different variety of it, but it's still acceptable. Those types of applications are very, very challenging on rules base. So when you look at deep learning and when you look at edge learning, it's those are the types of solutions that we look at, those types of sure. equipment and technology. I think it's quite amazing, actually. I mean, so I've seen some of the, uh, the sort of videos you've sent through just for, for working on kind of thing. Um, and it's quite amazing the, uh, the depth, really, that the cameras have. Um, you're looking at incredibly minute errors on products or um, you know failures on a on a piece of metal for example or even reading codes on on something that with the human eye you wouldn't be able to see even if you had a magnifying glass kind of thing mm -hmm. um, and these cameras can can pick that up and do it at, at quite a reasonable speed and that's the key difference We're, when we talk about code if we talk about um, optical character recognition OCR will most people will know it as uh, t traditionally it's been a case of in some industries it is what it is mr mr tesco mr m and s are happy with the fact that the quality of the code is fine we as humans can read it and when i used to visit factories 15 20 years ago customers used to say well, that's the product i'm happy at arm's length and it's acceptable things have changed now um you know uh, where quality has improved traceability is, is now everything has to be accountable. Mm. So things have slightly changed in that man, in, in that uh, respect of that area. But then if we look at the automotive industry, automotive industries are great at uh, giving you the perfect code that you need to read. However, it may have oil residue, it may have dark spots on it. That's something they can't change. They're not gonna clean it for us to say, okay, we need it machine readable. We, we will clean it. So it is what it is. So. In this case, it's kind of evolved slightly. The pharmaceutical uh, have changed, the food industry have changed. So it becomes machine readable. No longer are we as consumers happy with the fact that, yes, if, if characters are touching, we're, we're questioning whether it's something that we can buy off the shelf. So the, the supermarkets are then challenging their suppliers to make it more machine readable. But you, you're right, it's, it's, the key difference is we as humans have, a, have adapted since we were, you know, yay high, and we can see if characters are touching, they're still touching, but they're still two characters, for example. Mm. The difference is we as humans can't manage at the speed of a, a vision system. 
that no. has the capability of reading 20, 30 codes per second, mm -hmm. we would significantly take a lot longer because we're analysing it, we're also verifying to make sure it's the right code. So we would be taking 10 to 15 seconds. Yeah, sure, sure. In terms of, um, uh, I think that kind of leads on anyway to, to sort of the, the human replacement factor. And I, I don't mean to speak of that sort of in a bad way, mm -hmm. um, but I think it's very, it's an important element uh, of today's factory, of the factories of the future, um, that r and people are worried about it as well, mm -hmm. um, is uh, robots are sort of replacing people. Um, now, with the, the vision uh, sort of element of things, obviously you, there will be um, applications where you have people standing on a, on a production line or uh, elements like that. Uh, do you see or do you foresee sort of uh, vision um, moving some of those jobs or, you know, maybe taking them, but hopefully shift, you know, hopefully these businesses shifting those people with skill changes and things yeah. like that. But do you see Vision sort of taking taking on that role within within the sort of future factories? I think it sort of has to, to, mm. to some respect, because, you know, we, we talk to customers and obviously with the major events that have happened in the world over the last sort of four or five years, you know, with Brexit, mm. COVID, um, you know, customers have approached us where they they don't have any labour. So those sorts of inspections that were being done manually beforehand, there isn't physically somebody there to do it. And if there is, they're probably being overworked, overstretched. So mm. your failure rates are going to, you know, there's things going to get through. You can probably imagine sitting on a production line for eight hours, looking at the same product all day mm. long, you're going to miss a few. Yeah, you know, it's course, natural, yeah. it's human error. That, that's, that's what's there. So I think it's sort of t to keep up with the demand that we're placing on, on mm. you know, for, for consumable goods. It's going to have to happen. Yeah, and true. like you sort of mentioned, I think that the way to look at it, and I've had this conversation with a few people where, okay, those jobs are going to be replaced by vision, but then that person doesn't have to sit doing a really medial mm. task all day long. They can be better deployed elsewhere to do a more productive task that then is going to further increase production. So in the end, you could end up creating jobs because mm. if you've got higher demand, but you've got a more efficient, better, better production system, then you know, I, I, I don't see it as... Yes, it's going to replace that person in terms of doing that job, but they can be much better used elsewhere rather sure. than doing a really medial, boring mm. task all day long. I and think what, what we excuse me, uh, what what we need to recognise is um, it's already happening. It's mm. been happening for years. If you go to visit an automotive uh, uh, manufacturer, robots are doing everything. Mm. We can't we can't compete. Unfortunately, we don't have. Uh, the, the strength and the willpower to actually continue but with meaningless tasks um, and we can't compute, uh, we can't manage with the speed. So it's already happening. So mm -hmm. it, it's, it's this uh, naivety in some respect of it's going to take jobs over, but it already has. Mm -hmm. It's just because we are growing as a population. We, we, we don't want to go to visit a, a supermarket and find half of the shelves are empty, which happened 15, 20 years ago. Mm. And, and well, what's caused that is automation. A few, few years ago as well. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. And, and, that's, uh, and it's obviously to uh, emphasise what, what Richard said, COVID has, has obviously shown that you can't rely on humans. Mm. You know, but the, the, the world population is still going one way. Mm. And so we need... We need automation in, in factories. Yeah, and sure. We need more automation actually in this country that, than we have ever had. Mm. Well, I, I understand that we're sort of behind uh, in terms of having more up-to-date factories anyway. Um, you know, other countries are sort of almost steaming ahead uh, mm. in some respect. Um, I think uh, it's one thing to note as well that uh, automation in general over history, people have always been worried about new technologies you know one when, when, when the uh the big sort of uh, metal printing machines came into the automotive factories people thought they would lose their jobs but obviously you know those autom those automotive companies have have grown and given thousands of jobs to yeah. to, to more mm -hmm. people um so i think yeah it's i think you're right when you say people can be naive about these things and i mean there's probably a bit of media sort of stir up yeah. in some respect as well um because they always need something to write about, don't they? Yes. Um, but uh, but yeah, it's. I think there's always the people always need to consider, and I think businesses need to consider as well. Because obviously, I don't think you can put all of that worry into the employee. Absolutely. The businesses need to say, actually, we need to be a responsible employer, and we can't just buy this equipment and get rid of people. We need mm -hmm. to buy this equipment and 
train people for other skill sets or other areas of our business where they can, uh, you know, uh, yeah. improve themselves and improve, hopefully, the business as well. Absolutely. Um, I think one thing, one thing um, my colleague Leah asked me to sort of uh, dig into a little bit was, do you have any examples of where we as a business uh, have helped customers? Now, I understand that uh, more often than not, our customers don't necessarily want us talking about the exact details of, of you know, where we've assisted or where we've, you know, in, uh, installed a, a system or helped install a system. Um, but can you sort of anecdotally cover anything or, you know, instead of saying this company, it's just some obscure other company? <laughs> I mean, there's, uh, well, I, I won't mention the name, but hmm. there are um, a, a certain company that we're, we're currently doing some work with. Um, they, they've had continuous problems identifying something uh, as, as small as the type of uh, seals that they put within an engineering an, an engineered part um, it's time consuming and it's one of those jobs where you'll question as a human you'll say is that right is that wrong so the, what what we've introduced is vision into the company um, so that allows the possibility for a human just to kind of step away and say okay that, that's that's something that we don't know no longer need to do mm. yes the initial groundwork needs to be uh, in place to make sure that the vision is working and it's it's tested, gone through its uh, pre-test as such, and then uh, the operator would walk away and rely on the, the, the cameras to, to carry out the work. But there's lots of areas where we look at the food industry. Date code, for example. Date code used to be traditionally, um, we check every half an hour or we check every two, two hours. By, by the time two hours has come by, it could be two palletfuls. Mm. Nowadays, everything is measured upon how the point it leaves a a, uh, a, a, a farming f a field area, for example, to the point it reaches the the uh, supermarket shelves. All that's measured, and all it means is when when we we're now ramping up the speed of production, a couple of hours between a a, a human checking and verifying if the co code's been printed. And that's all we're looking at is just print code. Um, that means that, unfortunately, two hours could be meaning that the pallets are now on a wagon on the way mm. down. So what supermarkets have traditionally done, and they probably still do it now, is they'll accept goods. But if something's missing or something isn't quite right, they'll end up fining the company, the supplier, and they'll also ask them to put something in place. So Vision has given the means of a company to say, okay, it'll do a visual inspection, but the difference is it'll do it at high speed and humans can't manage. Mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, one thing Darren's mentioned to me before is uh, the dirty, dangerous and dull sort of jobs. Mm -hmm. And that's kind of where the vision can come in mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and work in those in kind of environments where, where yeah, you know, you're sort of draining someone of their, their, their capabilities yeah. really because they're doing something repetitive yeah. and menial in a way um yeah no it's uh, it's it's quite a quite a useful mm. useful product in that in that respect so um i think one thing that's that's worth uh, discussing is sort of factories of the future um and where vision places itself within those um obviously oh, i think we, we we may have discussed before slightly but but when it comes to robotics and mechatronics, uh, vision, you know, what kind of role does that play within within those kind of uh, applications? Well, uh, it plays a key part. Yeah. Um, we talk about uh, future factories, and um, again, we're st as a as a nation, even possibly as a continent, we're quite some far uh, d some distance away from what companies are calling lights out, or well, that's how it appeared. Um, a few years ago, I was watching a documentary uh, about Tesla, uh, and Tesla had already had a, a situation where they had lights out. What that actually meant was lights can be turned off, robots are doing all the work, vision is carrying out. They had two people that, I think, if I remember right, had two people who were on their bikes every so often just monitoring things. Mm. So um, at that time, it was full production. Um, it seemed quite some distant, uh, distance away until about, I th think about approximately four or five years ago, um, one of our sales uh, g uh, guys, my la previous company, um, 
mentioned that General Motors in this country um, said by 2025 they've got to have a situation where there's lights out. Um, so these factories are already happening and the, the beauty of buying into Cognex is they're already thinking about future. Uh, some of the products that they've recently launched are already uh, accommodating in Industrial 4.0, which means that if a customer, for example, wants to see what's going on, they can sit there with a mobile phone, sit there with a laptop, and it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, in the factory itself. They could be at home. They could be in a different, different city. They could be even be in a different country. So Industrial 4.0 is quite key to, to how customers should think about when they're buying vision. Does it manage that? Because we are becoming, like I, like I keep mentioning, that we are more demanding. You know, we don't, we don't like it if we want to order a brand new car. We, we might put a, a price tag on it, but then we've got to wait half a year um, or even p possibly longer. But only things like uh, automation will improve that because humans can't manage that. Mm -hmm. And I think, so, so in terms of lights out, just to go back to that slightly, that's a factory running uh, independently effectively yeah. and, and producing uh, consumable products. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, on its on its own. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I mean, that's quite quite impressive, isn't it? It is impressive, <laughs> and and going back to obviously whether it takes jobs away, it's mm. how you use people is going to be quite key. Um, there's lots of roles that are um, are not filled. Uh, lots of university students that are coming out are not looking at p potentially what jobs are going to be out there for future proofing, mm. uh, uh, ensuring that their future is provided for. So it's quite key for, for that to happen. It, unfortunately, whether we like it or not, automation is going to happen. Mm -hmm. And we, we're going to see more robots doing tasks that humans previously uh, did. And also in hand with robots, we've got vision as well. So vision is quite key. It's the, it, it's the eye to the, to, to the robot. Yeah. Uh, we, we are not humans. Uh, we, we are not uh, robots. We are humans. But obviously everything we do relies on vision, mm. visual aspects of it mm. before we carry out a task. Yeah. And it's the same in automation. Yeah. So you need yeah. vision, you need barcode readers, for example, carrying out uh, uh, tasks for, for ensuring there's traceability on products. Um, going back to uh, even the super factories, the likes of Amazon, uh, Ocado, uh, you've got tote boxes and robots moving parts and par uh, parts for to put back onto shelves, taking things off shelves. Um, so that makes it easier for us to be able to say, go onto the likes of Amazon and say, okay, I need this. And by the time you think about it, tomorrow has arrived um, and mm. you've got it. And it cannot, that's only happening because some of the, the aspects of humans have been taken out. Mm. But obviously it's, com it's down to, obviously, like you mentioned before, companies have to recognize that um, we need, we're still going to need humans, but how they deploy humans into mm. other areas and more skilled jobs will, will ensure that they've still got a future themselves. Sure. I think, um, I think uh, with uh, the factories of the future, talking about um, these independent sort of uh, uh, plants and factories um, and, and moving people around, you can actually, uh, well, you could consider for Tesla, for example, you could hire more engineers mm. and yeah. provide a better product Absolutely. at the end of it by, by having people in, in these sort of higher skilled positions and, and so on, uh, working to create a better product. Mm -hmm. um, so it's at the end of, at the, end of the day, it's, it's all better for the consumer um, and hopefully better for the employee as well. Absolutely. Yep. So, mm -hmm. um, okay, I think uh, one thing I'd like to cover is, is sort of how um, easy these products are to work with uh, within the sort of Rockwell yep. um, environment. Um, could you sort of uh, talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so I mean, just to sort of go back over the uh, mechatronics uh, sort of aspect as well, we recently looked at um, putting a demonstration together for a customer where we were using a, a Cognex L4000 3D smart camera, um, talking to a, a Rockwell PLC, and then also to a Denso um, robot, which Within, I think we, we had the sort of team at Retico, so we had some of our um, automation specialists as well. Um, we sort of worked together, and within a day, we'd sort of got everything talking to each other, doing a, a nice, simple, uh, few different movements. 
Um, and that really just highlighted how easy the integration works between uh, Cognex products and Rockwell, um, all through add-on profiles within Studio 5000. So for you know people like us that, you know, we see these products all day long. We, we work on the, the Cognex software, but to see you know people able to put that package together yeah. relatively easily with with people, you know, we, we're sort of yeah, we are specialists, but we're sort of sales focused. We're not yeah. engineers as such. We don't sit there all day long engineering systems and products, but to see it work that sort of simply and in such a straightforward method, we know that when we deliver that message to customers, it really hits home. Then when they can see that working, yeah. that. They're the ones that have got you know the years and years of experience of working with Rockwell PLCs and with Cognex, and when they can see how this works together, I'm sure it's it's a big plus point to them that they're not going to have to spend hours and hours scratching their heads and you know calling different countries trying to get support. It's you know it's, it's it is a very easy system to integrate together. Sure, I think um, uh, one thing you sort of touched on there is really uh, something that Rutico can offer, and maybe it isn't something that we sort of talk about enough. Um, is that we've got a sort of bank of specialists, really, uh, who are involved in pretty much any area you'd want to look at within automation. Um, could we, you know, sort of discuss a little bit about that? Yep. You know, what we can do, how we can help customers. You know, we were talking earlier, Cam, about um, about you know we have the vision stuff. You might go to a customer and provide all the vision sort of tech, mm -hmm. um, but then also. Customers don't necessarily recognise that we do PLCs or that we do the HMIs uh, and other things yeah. like that. I, th I think it's one of those things where you know, obviously, we both go and visit customers yeah. uh, an awful lot, and there'll be some discussions we have where customers aren't aware that that we do Cognex, but that they'll you know they have really good relationships with our you know some of our other specialists, and and, and once they sort of see how we, how we work together, they can see then that we you know we can offer the full whether they need the vision system, the PLC system, mechatronics. I've had it quite often where you'll go and see a customer and they'll ask me a question that, you know, it's out of my comfort zone to be about PLCs or robots, but you can straight away say, ah, I know exactly who to mm. phone and the same day you can get back to them and answer that question and it just gives them the confidence then that, you know, we're not just trying to push one product and say, there you go, there's vision, well, you need to work out the rest mm. yourself. We just go back to whoever the specialist is going to be and plug them in and we work as a team to solve to solve the whole application. So we'll look at the whole, you know, the whole system rather than just trying to, you know, I'll try and go in and sell my vision piece and then pass it off to somebody else. We we sit around a table, we have discussions, we'll sit in the lab mm -hmm. looking at jobs, we'll book a, a room upstairs or, or one of the rooms down in Milton Keynes and work as a team to solve an application. So it's yeah, it's very much a, a complete system rather than, you know, just trying to sell product. We do look at trying to offer a full solution to a customer that, you know, we've tried and tested and know it's going to work. And that's an important, we've been mainly focused on, and there's, as we've been discussing, a lots of uh, vision goes hand in hand with robots. But we also have to recognise that PLCs are quite key now. 15, 20 years ago, there was very, very few customers that were potentially using uh, PLCs. Um, they just wanted digital output, a light beacon or a, uh, a confirmation a two-way device to say switch off the machine. In information and also touching about uh, 4.0, industrial 4.0 is the fact that it's key, information is quite key. So most of the customers that um, I speak to are talking about communications. How do I get that data out to a PLC? Uh, we have scenarios where customers want PLCs from us. So it's it, going back to obviously your question is, Maybe some customers don't recognise that Rotico have a lot to offer. If when we have customers that visit some of our mechatronics events or our Rotico live events that we have, um, you can just stand there in the middle. And I did it myself. Yeah, yeah we've done Stood that. Stood in the times. middle of the room and I looked around and I said, "Wow, we have a lot to offer." Um, although we're classed as a distributor, we're not a typical distributor. Yes, we do shift boxes, but we have the expertise. Uh, I have, I have 15 years of experience with vision. Uh, Richard has come on board a few years ago. He's picked up vision really, really well. Going back to the robot teams, we have people in controls. We have the automation team. We have a team of PLC guys. And that's the key thing to recognize that we can't answer a lot of the questions that some, some customers may be able to uh, answer, but some customers can't. But we have the means to say, 
okay, we'll get one of our PLC engineers mm -hmm. to have a come and have a word with you. Or myself and there's a, a, a one of our uh, automation guys, we sat down yesterday to prove out a an application for a customer to ensure that what they were receiving was a, uh, was achievable. We're going to be sitting down again. So, so we can offer all that. And it, what it means to a customer is it's been proven out. They're not having to commit to doing anything. So we offer that service for free of charge. Yeah, I think it gives customers an awful lot of confidence to yeah. that, that you know they're buying into a, a proven system with you know top of the range products, mm -hmm. with it being Rockwell, uh, Cognex, but also as well they're incredibly busy. So yeah. sometimes you know they might have a, an application come along where they're really keen to use Vision, but if they've not got that knowledge and they haven't got the time, they're probably just you know, push it under the carpet and save it till later. So we we, we do walk into mm -hmm. quite a few jobs where, you know, customers have had them for four, five, ten years sometimes, and they've had a job they want to look at, and that's where we can really help is, you know, we can spend those hours doing the testing and coming up to proof concept. And I think sometimes when we present that back to people, mm -hmm. they are very impressed with what we can what we can achieve. And I think sometimes that's a major selling point for ourselves is, you know, we can offer all of that and we don't even charge any money for it, so it's 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 a big you know big thing for customers mm. that they can have that confidence. Yeah, I think um, I think there's one thing to be said for Rutico providing value uh, beyond you know just the the box shifting sort of element of what we do, um, and I, I think as well as not only do we have the specialist teams, um, but there's also the partner the partners yeah. that are with Rutico being the other sort of uh, the other companies um, that. You know, we've got a kind of direct line to some of them, yes. yeah. uh, and we could communicate with them if there's a problem that we can't solve, even within the, the you know within the expertise of the, all the teams that we have. Mm -hmm. We could always phone up, say, ProSoft or um, yeah. you know any of the other suppliers to 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 understand a problem around a product. Yeah, well, I mean, just for you know to give Cognex an example, we work very closely mm -hmm. with the, the team at Cognex, so. We do joint visits with with their sorts of sales and technical guys, so they'll come to site with us. So I think it again gives customers even further peace of mind when they see what Rutico have got to offer, and then they know they've got the full support of Cognex as well. You know, they've got two points of contact that mm -hmm. they can they can reach out to if need be. But yeah, we work together on on pretty much all jobs. You know, we've got loan equipment on the way to us to test out jobs for customers. So if, you know, we've got quite a comprehensive range of, of demo and test equipment. But then if there's something we don't have because there is a huge range of products, then Cognex are just a phone call away, and we, we can get that product to, to test and help customers. So yeah, we, we sort of work as you know as, as if we're the same company in essence. So it's it's a very well joined up approach that I think it you know just gives customers even more benefits. Absolutely, mm. yeah, lovely. Um, so I think uh, that pretty much covers covers it for today. Unless you guys have sort of anything else you'd like to to discuss or talk about. No, I think we've covered general aspects of what we want to cover. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy with yeah. that. Lovely. Cool. Well, thank you very much for, uh, for tuning in. Uh, and thank you very much, Cam and Rich, for, uh, for being here today. Um, tune in next time for our, for our next video uh, at the control room. Thank you very much.